Welcome to another episode of Velocity Coming to you at the speed of sound, we are on the air at the Exabud Soundhouse Studio in Cleveland, Ohio. My name is Nick, and I'm here with my co-host. Wow, I was going into Mr. Krabs by the end of that. <laughs> my great co-host, SpongeBob Luke Pants. And I am not Macho Man Randy Krabs, but I am Luke, and uh, thank you for coming here. I just want to introduce to your dad's favorite DJ. How you doing? I'm doing great, guys. Thanks for having me out on the show. Oh, of course. It's always a great show with you here. And uh, Nick, what do we got on the docket today? It's going to be a good one. The 56th episode of Velocity Chaos Podcast. We're going to open up with what do you think it means? We're going to hit our tried and true buzzkill segment in the middle of the show. And we're going to wrap it all up. We're going to launch another new segment for you guys called Master Debaters, where Luke and I are going to go toe-to-toe to sway your dad's favorite DJ into liking us more than you. I mean, the other guy. Uh, anyway, it's going to be a great show. We're really looking forward to it. Uh, just a reminder for our returning listeners and a note to our new friends. Here at the Velocity Cast Podcast, we explore the highest heights of human knowledge and the lowest depths of crude humor. Our mission is to tickle that pink thing between your ears, poke that frontal lobe, and sometimes just smash the laugh box. So hop in and buckle up for an infotainment ride across the airwaves. And before we get into all of that, just a reminder to follow us on Instagram at Velocity Chaos Pod and on Facebook. Why not go on to the other social medias? Uh, Yeah, check us out on YouTube. Why not? Give us a subscription. Share the content because you can see us right now. Or if you're driving, you probably don't watch this. Just listen to us on uh, Apple Podcasts and Spotify or Stitcher, SoundCloud. Give us all that. So... uh, Follow and subscribe on those and leave us a rating if you will, please. Thank you very much. It truly does help and sharing it with a friend. So like we always feel the thanks and gratitude for your support. We thank you. Okay, we uh, we are an infotainment podcast. We like to enlighten as much as we like to diminish our brain cells. Uh, we're going to do a segment that we like to call What Do You Think It Means? Where we're going to take a word mm-hmm. and we are going to fart it out our chairs. Yeah. Uh, no, <laughs> we are going to uh, talk about this word. We're going to see who can guess what it is, what it means, what it's about. We're going to go through a little etymology. So we're going to pick your brain a little bit at the top of the show and uh, hopefully enlighten you a little bit. So, Luke. Yes. Your dad's favorite DJ. What do you think the word absquatulate means? See, I, I already know what absquatulate means. Do you really? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> but I bet your dad's favorite DJ knows. I bet your dad absquatulates all the time. Yeah, it sounds like something that he would do. <laughs> it's actually really sad. If you when you find out what the word means, that's a terrible thing to say to somebody. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's gonna be sad. So uh any guesses off the rip before we get into so we, etymology here. So like masticate is like chewing. So yeah. absquatulate it would be uh <laughs> stomping the grapes. I don't know. <laughs> like, it's, it's the part of winemaking where they stomp the grapes. They absquatulate the grapes. I give you a lot of credit for a creative answer. It's yeah. not not it. Uh, your dad's favorite DJ. What do you got? It's like abscond. So like to absquatulate is to like break break legs and run away with a person. I know. This guy really paid attention. Really paid attention in Latin class. I, <laughs> Nailed it. He's much closer. Not exactly. On it. <laughs> that was really what it was. Closer. <laughs> I was upon the leg thing. Yeah. Just pick up, pick up the, pick up the people and run away with them. Uh, you're close. You're close. So you ready to get into it? You ready to break this oh, word down? Yeah. You're, you're closer than him. I Let's abscratulate this. Let's abscratulate. <laughs> We'd have to end the show if we abscratulated oh. right now. Um, so this is a mid 19th century word that seems to be a blend of a few different words. And I actually have a chart. You can look at it if you Google it. Google has a nice relationship with Oxford language, which is one of the biggest kind of collections of words in in the world. It's a good partnership. It's interesting. They've really 
I, I've been checking them out because they used to just have Oxford dictionaries. They've pivoted into having these online deep etymology research databases that you actually have to pay for. So That's how they get you. But they do have a relationship with Google, so we thankfully know kind of what Squatch Light means. Anyway, I'm looking at the chart. It was highly used in the mid-1800s and then dropped off because it was replaced by a word oh. that I will tell you about in a little bit. But it has since kind of shown a bit of a resurgence in recent days. So Obsquatulate is making a comeback. Anyway, we're going to get into the breakdown of what these three words were that seem to be the roots. So this I, is kind of like flocks and oxen I hip yeah. It's like a bunch of words smashed together. I'm obsquatulating over here in my chair just uh, waiting for this answer. <laughs> Again, you have to like be getting up and leaving. Oh. <laughs> I'm trying to give you some hints. So the first word is uh, that they think is part of the root is uh, squaddle. Which is not the hmm. Pokemon. <laughs> Squaddle is a 16th century word that seems to be a derivative of squat, which is a word we use today. Yep. Squat or get off the pot. Mm -hmm. uh, which <laughs> is some people I work with is one of their favorite kind of terms, which is just like, hurry up and make a decision. Uh, it's from Middle English. And here, I'm thinking it's taking the meaning of to hide, which is actually what squat used to mean. It was like more, mm. it's not just like the physical act of like bending your knees. It's actually like taking cover. Yeah. Okay. That's like what squatting the was. The Slav squat. Yeah. Yeah. The Slav squat. But it was for safety, probably in the medieval times, you know, squat down. So like the arrow doesn't hit you in the face. Uh, you know, the Slav squat, how you can tell imposter. How? So if you're, you, you know, if you're, f Someone's doing a slob squat and their heels are up. They're uh, they're faker. A, they're a faker. So it's got to be flat footed. Yeah, heels to the ground, comrade found. Heels to the sky, Western spy. I think is what it is. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow! I love how in depth you are familiar with the slob squat. I'm never gonna look at it the same again. Yeah. I'm also gonna make sure that I'm doing it right because I did just yeah. do one. Uh, hold on, hold. Yep, I got you. The, you de the keep... demo. Oh, I was. I'm dude. It's all you on the. On the Check it out. Verification. This was in Atlanta outside of cookout. Is this guy's verification? Look, we're all good. Oh, yeah, you're good. Certified. Good. Flat footed. Comrade oh, found. yeah, dude. Comrade found. Got, hold on. Yeah. Wait. Let's see. This is Let's terrible uh, audio podcast stuff, but visually, you can see this on YouTube. Your dad's, we're doing. Your dad's favorite DJ is a comrade. Comrade. So we got comrades here in the building right now. <laughs> So word one and word number one is is squat. This isn't how the word is like put together. That's like the middle part, squat. Absquat. Okay. The first part of the word comes from abscond. You guys kind of know what that word means. That's that's kind of what you were talking about earlier. Yeah. Your dad's favorite DJ said to pick the person up and run away. Same thing, absconding with the maiden. Abscond with a squatter. Abscond <laughs> with the Slavs. Um, do you know what abscond means, Luke? Uh that's uh, another um do you know what it means? <laughs> that's a separate episode. Yeah. Uh, do you want to take a guess? No. Okay. Abscond. That's like I think that's when they have like a, a like a dessert and then they uh, hit the flame with it. They abscond. <laughs> they abscond. The, <laughs> the, little burnt. The meringue. They abscond yeah. the meringue. Yeah. Um, close. It's a 16th century word from French abscondé, uh, based in Latin, which is abscondair or whatever. I don't know. Uh, which has to be a Harry Potter spell, right? I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to dare. <laughs> no, it takes something away from Oh, I'm just going is like, you think you expel the armist. It's like the most powerful, like one in Harry Potter. I'm just going to dare. Like takes your soul right out of your chest. <laughs> Dang. Like, um, I hated that. I hated reading that. that those, Abracadabra. No, Adabra Cadabra. Oh, you know, the kill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, one best, that's one of the best impersonations of uh, he who shall not be named I've ever heard because it's so funny. He is quite comical. Yeah. He's like yeah. orgasming every time he freaking kills somebody. Hey, <laughs> which is actually probably within his character traits. Yeah. Um, the dark side of Harry Potter. <laughs> Uh, okay, so we got abscond, which means to um, to take to to oh, take Taking something squats. and run off with, right? And then the last word, perambulate. perambulate. Ooh, any guesses here? Like a parabola of sorts. Okay, 
per- parameter. What's a parameter? <laughs> <laughs> I can't back that up. Me either. <laughs> per- parameters, so like the certain p- sections. Oh. So there's a squat. So we got we got squat. Take we got away. sections, and you take you take somebody's squat away. The more the more <laughs> You're important stealing word someone's here, chair. The more important word here is a In part area. of the word is ambulate. What it's like oh. anamorphic. It's uh, always anamorphic. changing. So what's our guess? Do we have one? You're um it's you're stealing people's chairs for a certain section that they're not allowed to sit in. <laughs> it's like VIP only, and then you get left with stand that's why they came up with standing room only. Because they have squatulated that's all a, the chairs. They're perambulated. <laughs> <laughs> they're squatulated all the chairs. Okay, so perambulate is sixteenth century, a Latin derivative that means walk through, about, or over. Okay. Okay. So squaddle, which means to hide. Uh, abscond, which means to take away from, uh, and then perambulate, walk through, about, or over. To smash, this is a smash burger of these three words. Any other, any other last minute vies for for this for this word? Absquatch. Abs- okay. It's a verb. You guys figured that out. It's, I mean, it's your dad's favorite DJ's ball court right now. Okay, so to you, you have you have to hide to squat, squat, squat to abscond with, and to walk over so you in plain sight take something okay in plain sight i don't know you're you're getting there you're getting there so stealing you're yeah obsquatulate yeah, pick, pick pocketing obsquatulate means to run away or make off essentially it's like fleeing ah uh, obsquatulating is fleeing that's why when you said about his dad obsquatulating it's kind of sad because his dad yeah, just ran off fame. out of the family that's well, at least that. he told me you who his too? favorite DJ was before he <laughs> yeah. left. Um, so, absquatulate means to run away or make off. It was popularly, popular, popularly used in 1840. It was most often used in this play, and it was a like one of the characters was this rough kind of braggadocious. It was used in that play with Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, I'm dropping the guy's name, uh, Lee Harvey Oswald. John Oaks Booth. That's John the one. That's what I'm getting. Lee my, my assassins went back in yeah. time and shot yeah. the other president. John Wilkes Booth was obsquatulating after, uh, <laughs> after that. Hey, that's actually used accurately. Uh, he, w- oh, dude, you know, you know Scott Bakula from uh, what's the show that he was in? The freak, the one where he's like uh, tra- time it. traveling. What if Lee, What if there's like a dark version of that show that was just about an assassin who's traveling through time, just whacking people. Well, oh, that's the Scott Bakula. That's thing. time time spanners. That's our John Vor Johnny V's uh, time spanners. His comic book. His comic book. I helped him uh, with that first release of that first episode. I don't know if he's done any more since, but yeah, that's what it, that's the whole premise was. Okay. Um, is Quantum Leap was the name of the Scott ba- Bakula movie. I yeah. just ha- or show. I just had to double check that. Yeah. Okay, so one last quick thing that's really funny about it, Scotchlate, right? So it was really popular from this. It was. It came from like a London stage, like the East End, like where they were like doing a lot of stage work. And it came from a play where there's this kind of like parody on an American character. So I don't like this word because it's <laughs> anti-American. But um, he was very braggadocious and funny, and he squatulated like at the end of the play or something. They accused him of squatulating, which is like running away. Um, and anyway, the Civil War. It was used at this top of the Civil War, but then the word skedaddle replaced obsquatulate. So, like, they kind of mean the same thing, but skedaddle has become more popular. You know that. We, well, a lot of us know that word, right? We yeah. know that word. Skedaddle. It's, it's much more friendly. Yeah, you got to skedaddle, like, yeah. right? So, obsquatulate was replaced by skedaddle in, like, the 1860s, uh, like, uh, 70s, I think. Uh, huh. So, wartime. So, um, yeah, so there you go. How did they come upon yeah. skedaddle? I, <laughs> I was just thinking the same thing. I was like thinking of some dude with a deep New York accent. He'd be like, just trying to say, like, go on, get, get out of here. But like, some guy's 60s, like, what's, he, the what's he saying? It's skedaddle. What does skedaddle mean? <laughs> then he pulls yeah, out a yeah. knife and you're like, I got to go. That must mean what it is. Get out of here. Uh, or so like, uh, yeah. <laughs> what is it? It's funny. If you're like, if you're, if you're in a group of, of warriors, right, you're from the North, you're like, you've seen a lot of grizzled combat and you're just like, Guys, we better skedaddle. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, pew, pew, there's fire. Like, there's cannon fire. You're like, men, we must skedaddle. Did he just say skedaddle? <laughs> it must have be, been a southern thing. That'd be more like, make it, uh, <laughs> we've made them skedaddle. <laughs> we are the victors again. <laughs> 
<laughs> or, I mean, even to absquatulate. They've absquatulated. Oh. They've absquatulated themselves. <laughs> <laughs> we are superior. We are superior. They've skedaddled. <laughs> yeah, skedaddled. What's the um, adjective of squatulate? Of squatulence? <laughs> squatulence. Yeah, shit their pants and ran. <laughs> Them rebels and their squatulating ways. I'm squatulated, guys. Write it down. Don't do it. Don't be cowards. Put that in your journey. Face your fears. Don't obsquatulate. Oh, man. All the obsquatulating I've done in my life has made me thirsty. <laughs> very, very thirsty. And just just thinking about running away from all the problems that I've had. Uh, I'm very parched. And you know what I like to get my lips around when I get thirsty? Drink. God, do I love drink. Drink is so incredibly delicious and refreshing. Just saying the name drink gets me salivating. I'm going to need a bib from all the salivation just from talking about drink. Drink is there for me when I need it most, on those hot summer days or those dry winter mornings or even in the middle of the night when my throat is as parched as a camel in the desert. Drink is a thirst quencher, to say the least, and it is a mouth wetter, to say the most. Drink comes in your mouth, gets everything appropriately moistened, and then washes down your gullet the way nature planned for us to get it down. So get your lips on a free six-pack of drink with code VCPODWET at checkout. Drink the mouth wetter. This is not an actual product service idea. Just in case you thought it was, it's not. If there is something out there with the same name, we are unaware to have no affiliation and offer no judgment on the actual product service or idea. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So we're doing a segment now. A lot of our listeners will be familiar with it at this point. It's called Buzzkill, and it is a fun one. Essentially... Your dad's favorite DJ has a hopper full of topics, and he's also got a random timer that's pretty much between 30 seconds and about three minutes. He's going to run it for each topic at the end of the timer, which is randomized, by the way, if I didn't mention that. You're going to hear the sound. That is Luke's and my cue to move on to the next topic, which he will continue to feed us. Uh, it's a nice 20 minute segment. We cover a lot of ground. This is pretty much the bedrock of Velocity Chaos podcast. A lot coming at you as fast as we can. We better absquatulate so we don't get hit. <laughs> <laughs> Run away. The show's over. Bye. Uh, so I'm ready. You ready, Luke? I'm always not ready. Well, your dad's favorite DJ is ready. So take it away. All right, fellas, you know the rules. Let's get you started off. Your topic today is Bob Ross incredible i mean incredibly soothing incredible artist do you think he had neck problems from all the all the hair with the fro i always wondered that i think kid. he had less neck problems because it was like <laughs> so a poop. pillow it was like it was like a, it's like a neck pillow. they put helium in yeah. there <laughs> it's just like the helium is trapped in those rustic curls and he's just like yeah. floating around painting and that's how he could get all the great perspectives to paint. He's yeah. like he, his superpower was he could just float around, just floating, floating above it all. Yeah, floating all above the it badness, all. all the badness, just painting pretty little bushes, happy little bushes, happy little trees. It's Talk like, about perfecting something. Yeah, all the uh, I've there's a on Twitch they I don't know if they still do, but they had a channel of just Bob Ross painting. Yeah, and I, there would be many a nights where I would just veg out, just <laughs> watch and like, yeah, that is nice. That is a happy little tree. <laughs> and, <laughs> he was, yeah, he, but like the thing is, like he'd be painting them, and he's like, "All right, I'm gonna do this titanium white real quick, and then slap the devil out of it, and then, uh, and then he'd put something in there, like, oh, that's a fantastic painting, and then he'd add something. Like, I'm gonna add this tree here. No, don't add the trees. You're ruining, it. You're ruining. It. Why are you doing that, Bob? And then he'd finish the tree. I'm like, oh my god, it's even better than before. He just saw it, saw it. He pictured it. He had, the future. He has that for them. He's like, oh, I'm gonna add add this bush over here. Like, don't do that. <laughs> oh, it's great. Your topic is dictionaries. You got to pay for them now, apparently. The, those, <laughs> Oxford language. What is that? What they call those big word books? Well, the Webster's Merriam-Webster's is, I think, the book book. Book, yeah. Can you go to the library and rent uh, a dictionary? Do they have? Those <laughs> can, can I check this out? <laughs> yeah. As well as reference materials, you can't check out reference materials, but maybe they have one you can take home. Yeah. This one's for the ladies out there. You want to have a cool, like, instead of a guest book at a wedding. I recommend buying a pretty, a nice old dictionary and have your guests write a sign next to a word that mm -hmm. they want to remember you by. Absquatulate. Absquatulate. <laughs> uh, 
just in case it doesn't go well, you can always subsquatulate. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think that's a, a a nice tip out there. We did that. It's a lot of fun looking to yeah, the dictionary. And someday though, like some of my friends were thought they were really funny and circled some pretty crude words. <laughs> and so like I'm just Dang. know my kids someday are gonna look it up and be like, oh, a dictionary. <laughs> I guess I thought I was funny. Clitoris. Your topic is movie theaters. Oh yeah, never never going away. Never, never going back to one. <laughs> really? No, I probably. I don't know. I never went to many in the first place. I guess when I got, when I was dating Michelle, yeah, I, we went to a lot. When's the last time you went? With Michelle at some point. This I always, year? Not this year. Last year, maybe. But I always fall asleep in uh, movie theaters. <laughs> I fall asleep in dark rooms. Yeah, it's like <laughs> figure that. <laughs> it's like just a little cool in yeah, there. Perfect and, temp. You get yeah. a little blanket or a nice hoodie with you. Yeah. You take the hoodie off. Do you take the hoodie off and like put it on as a blanket, or no. do you just keep the hoodie? I just, I just always wear long sleeves. Okay, like, so it's like I was always climate controlled. Got it. Myself. Uh, have you ever made out in a movie theater? No. Me neither. Because if I'm gonna pay ten dollars yeah. for popcorn and ten dollars for a movie ticket, there ain't no there ain't no lips in the <laughs> world that are worth more than that twenty bucks. So we're cheap bastards. We're cheap bastards. <laughs> That's always funny. Like I've always seen those moves of like people. Yeah. I, I love movies, so I was always very focused on the movie. The girl was probably the one trying to do it to me yeah. with the arm, like reaching the arm around me. I'm like, stop touching me! I'm watching it. We're at the climax of the movie. I can make you climax, baby. No, no, oh, shut up. <laughs> Tom Cruise is talking. It. I missed it. <laughs> Tom Cruise, he's sweating. He's sweating. Look, his shirt is off. Stop. <laughs> did you Did you ever get into Movie Pass? I did, dude. I that was crushed it. Most, I abused movie pass. Yeah, the most brilliant, stupid thing ever. <laughs> yeah. That I don't even know how that company was an idea. Yeah. To begin with. Uh, the it, the people that I can't wrap my head around are the people who are like trying to defend it. Like yeah. the chip's clearly <laughs> going down and they're just like, No, we're still working. If you don't know, Movie Pass was you could pay fifteen bucks a month and they give you a credit card and you pay that fifteen bucks and then they will pay for any if, movie you go to. Yeah. For for that month, so yeah, yeah. Michelle and I were just we both had one. We would we go to like three or four a month. Exactly. That's sixty bucks right there. Yeah. That they have to then pay forty five bucks. Yeah. Like extra. It's like why wouldn't people take advantage of that? And then yeah. you know like three months later, they're like um, we just got <laughs> you know five million dollars from someone because we were we basically got bankrupt. Owned. <laughs> got owned. Your topic is talent shows. Mm. I've emceed one, but I've never Have you? done one. That sounds fascinating. I'd love to do that. It was interesting. Yeah. I mean, was it bad? The thing I've, the thing I realized <laughs> that you have to, as an MC of a talent show, you're only there to try to hype everybody up. Oh yeah, yeah. And and even if the person is clearly terrible, the funny thing is, is now they just they hire cartoon characters to do like the hosting of these shows because. And I, I'm being facetious, but like their expressions are so big. These these people that they hire to do hosting, yeah, like somebody like pulls a sword out of their butt, and they're like, Whoa! <laughs> and like the audience at home, it's just funny the reaction shot they have of the host just turning to the camera. And, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's just funny. In real life, you watch something and you just react, and you're still facing it. Yeah, imagine being a person where you're in your everyday life, you see a street performer. And you're at the back of the crowd, and you just turn around and go, whoa, to nobody. Because <laughs> no you're just like, well, did you see that? It's just part of your brain at yeah. that point. <laughs> Watch this funny trick my buddy Johnny does. Like, go stand in front of him and, like, pop a can, uh, you know, can with your teeth. <laughs> whoa. That's, <laughs> that's what I hate about these, like, America's Got Talent or whatever. It's like, yeah. it's, I hate that singing gets through. Yeah. Like, it's like, come on. Like, there's people with real talent, like, interesting talents like magic tricks trump yeah singing. eating razor blades or something <laughs> or uh or uh you know i don't know crushing bowling balls or something or the cool shows where they're wearing like neon suits you know the whole the whole dance team oh, wearing yeah, yeah. like neon suits that have leds and the leds are programmed that trumps anything that's talent that you can do because they're inventing technology to go with their show yeah how do you how how does somebody sing better than that? Yeah, and and the thing is, the the problem with a lot of these shows is like, you do something, it's like that was awesome, but are you really gonna do something better? Like they have like <laughs> yeah, multiple, like it should just be you know one talent show, like bar, like this is it, this episode is all these people. Your topic is 
comic books. Johnny V in uh, Time Spanners. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Getting a lot of promotion out of this. Yeah. A lot of mileage. Is he paying you? <laughs> he did, yeah. Oh. <laughs> I shot like a little promo video for him. Nice. Yeah. I played it. And I, then he put me in, like, he put my name in the in the comic book. Hell yeah. Yeah. You're in a comic book. I'm in a comic book. How about that? Yeah. Can you buy this anywhere? Pff, maybe. Look up Time <laughs> Spanners. I think private I comic books, independent comic book labels, it's very hard to get any type of traction on them. Yeah. Uh, I, the big ones are so big at this point, and I don't. I have no idea how, in a modern landscape, the comic book business works. I don't understand. Yeah, and with everything being digital, it's like you just get everything online. So it's like, are you paying per you know view? But then people can easily copy it. And- I know the Marvel apps are like very popular because you get a lot of catalog and you get a lot of new stuff, and it's kind of like Netflix where mm-hmm. you you subscribe. And then you just get access to everything for that month. Yeah. And it's as much as you can read. So it's kind of cool because people pay, oh, I'll pay 15 bucks rather than trying to find it somewhere to download it without getting a virus. Yeah. And th- well, the thing is, then you got the artists. Are they actually still doing the, you know, the, the big drawings and the big, you know, pages? Or is it all digital now? I think a lot of it's still ink. Ink. Yeah. Because yeah. that's a, that's a. The tactile this is yeah. so important to get the right scan or to get the right. Yeah. Look, but you're, you're so right, though, on these smaller smaller um you know comic stories like to start a comic book i think it'd be crazy to try to do well what's interesting is especially with the superhero or like a special uh, gift kind of characters i was reading that there were like thousands of characters that disney uh identified when they were looking to buy marvel thousands jesus and so they were like look at all this ip we can we could take somebody who's a nobody who's like in the three thousands and make a whole movie or tv show out of them and people will love it and yeah. so marvel's just so stacked and so deep how are you gonna get something independent out there you can't your topic is roller coasters roller coaster <laughs> That's all I know. <laughs> <Roller> coaster. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is like, like the fourth covered, time. Yeah, we, uh, this keeps coming and, back. And we did a. Do you know what's popular on that? Uh, what's your favorite part of a roller coaster? The first drop, the last. That's drop. the scariest part. It's like the going up the hill is like, oh my god, it's happening again. And then you go down. I think the second hill is like okay, okay i'm in it now that's your favorite part i think so my favorite part is sitting in the front row of the car and being at the top of the hill of the first hill that's that's, that's my favorite yeah. part <laughs> especially if it's like the millennium force where it's massive and you're just like this is it <laughs> and then i just do the han solo woo! Yeah. And you're just <laughs> that's like I'm, I'm too like in the moment i'm st- like too scared still like i love it but it's yeah. too frightening but then after the first one i'm like all right i'm enjoying it now okay. like yeah. Like it, this, this fright is over, and now I'm in it. Got it. Okay. Cool. That's fair. Your topic is movie villains. <sighs> the best, best characters, ever. Yeah. Oh man, there's my, so many good ones. Pick one. My favorite ones. Like I've already mentioned this. Uh, Three Ninjas Snyder. <laughs> <laughs> is he, who's the one who drinks the laxative? Uh, that, that's just one of the goons. One of the goons. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the um my favorite of all time is uh Colonel William Tavington. Where's that from? From the Patriot. Oh. Played by Jason Isaacs, I believe. Yeah. I'm gonna go with Jason Isaacs. But uh dude, that that villain just lives to be bad, right? Like he he does everything just to piss off the hero. And that is the best kind of villain. Yeah. The ones who are just kind of like, who have certain weird conflict of emotions or they don't, they're just bad just to be bad. It, mm-hmm. It's got to be personal. And Tavington, oh man, he, the way he just, you when just he hate him. When he, spoiler alert, lots of spoilers really quick. <laughs> when we're we'll just call, talk freely. Like when he slits Heath Ledger's throat, you're just like, <laughs> and he already killed the other kid. Like you, yeah. he's just a child killer. So <laughs> child killers. Those are the best. Those are the best villains. Yeah. Um, ruthless. That's like ruthless. Uh, in um, dogged, dogged and yeah. ruthless. Just constantly pursuing. Yeah, those are my favorite. Villains. I know it's not a movie, but The Walking Dead. I don't know yeah. if you guys watch Negan. Like, Negan. He was great. Yeah. yeah. It was like like oh wow the show's interesting again. Yeah. Like he he brought that back for me, and then you know then the only other 
competitive type of villain is the ones where they're just so interesting and flamboyant that like you like them. Like I'm thinking of Barbosa from Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah. He's so so out there and so greatly performed that you're just into it. Or Davy Jones. Like they're not really they do bad things and you know they're the bad guy. Yeah. But they're just interesting to watch. Well Heath Ledger in The Dark Knight. Oh like boom. That's right. like fantastic. Like he's like he does such a masterful masterful performance. Yeah. And it's like, what? Wh- what is this? Like, because he's also saying stuff like, "It's not about the money. Yeah. It's about sending a message." Like, damn, that's that's what I think is great about. That's why I'm about dogged. He's yeah. so all the way to the end. He's always pushing Batman. Yeah. But I think the other great thing about movie villains, any type of story villain, they already have to be bad mm-hmm. before the story starts. The people who try to set the stage for a villain in the first like 20 minutes of a movie, you just take up too much time. Like Tavington, uh, the Joker. They're already bad. Yeah. And the reason, like, the Joker isn't, to me, the same, like, the movie with Joaquin Phoenix, yeah, it's not the same as because it's a character study. Yeah, it's, it's a about lot different. Him. It's not a hero versus a villain. But anytime you start with a, a villain that's already bad, people just, people know, this is the bad guy. Well, Jay Leno was the bad guy in that one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Your topic is skateboards. Oh. You do a kickflip? No. <laughs> yeah. Do a keg flip. Yeah. Busted ankles. Just I never broke them, but just I hated the when the board would hit the inside of your upper ankle. Yeah. Hated that feeling. Um it wasn't a strong skate. I wish I wish I knew how to skate. I always wanted to. Yeah. Just because I like the X games and stuff. But I never never went to a skate park. Like never I never actually a- had an actual skateboard. Yeah. I tried to learn how to Ollie it, but I couldn't do it. Like I could, but not really. Some people just get it. I know it's a lot of practice. I, I had some friends who were skaters, and they had fun because they would just do it. Yeah. But I was more into bike riding. Like I It's cooler, safer. Right off the wooden <laughs> ramp, you know. Yeah, <laughs> cinder block. That's how I found out I had testicles, actually. <laughs> then I the first time came I came down off the testicles. ramp and didn't have, like, have my feet on the pedals and this crossbar just... <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, what is this pain? It hurts so bad. <laughs> yeah. uh, my balls. Skaters, the one thing that blows my mind, I know it's a little different than skateboards, the longboards, mm. the the guys who are just in a parking lot and they're like spinning it around and walking it and doing all that crazy yeah. weird and stuff. Stevie with- Nicks is playing in the background. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, here you go. <laughs> the cranberry yeah. juice. Oh, man. <laughs> I... So I, when I was working downtown, I was I had to park at the Muni lot because it was free there, and I didn't want to pay you know a hundred bucks a month for parking. Yeah. So instead of walking the you know fifteen minutes, I got a skateboard, and I could get there in like six to seven minutes if nice. I was really cruising. Yeah. So yeah, that's what I would, you know, at nine at night I'd be leaving Superior and East Ninth, skateboarding down the sidewalk or the street if no one was driving, and yeah, kind of cool. It is cool. <laughs> it is nice. But I just feel more comfortable with not, two wheels yeah. rather than four little mini wheels. Your topic is urban exploring. Have you ever urbanly explored something? Yeah. It's neat and creepy. Creepy and cool and a lot of things going on. I'd like to do it more. I think. Yeah. There's a lot of cool buildings downtown. I think it'd be cool to do Urban X without having to break in. You know, if you could yeah. actually get permission to go in there. Just because that's the liability part of my brain is like, oh, don't do it. We got into a mall one time that we should definitely have not been in because there's no <laughs> entrance. So we took the junkie entrance like, <laughs> through the door. And the crazy thing was we were in the middle of the mall and it was getting dark. And so that's when it started to get a little eerie because there's like pockets of light because there's skylights, but no electric in there. Hmm. And in each of the shops, you couldn't see like the back of the the store. That's scary. So they're like all these little zombies. caves. Yeah. <laughs> but then you would also hear all the raccoons and stuff oh. in the ceiling, in the drop ceilings, just scuttling around. Yeah. And, and you're just like, time to go. <laughs> There's a, a local guy, uh, Johnny Yo. Johnny. I don't know if you heard of him. I, I think I have. Yeah. He, he he's put out some um some photo books like of yeah. of all his stuff, and I thought he I uh, I'm not saying we're gonna get him, but I thought he would be a cool interview guest to have on uh yeah on the show because I, w- I went with him once uh with uh with dennis he's like hey yeah. you want to come come with us I was like yeah sure nice and we went to some abandoned church like there was rubble everywhere and we were just Whoa. climbing around it was it was really neat that'd be cool to talk to him yeah um but that that is just like 
Like we, I mean, we already said it, but it's just, it's mystifying in a way. It's like all these old buildings, like just the stories behind them. And that's the other thing he does is he finds like the stories of the buildings and finds oh. what they were used for, like kind of who owned them. And wow. um, he, you know, he really dives deep and he makes them look amazing. Yeah. I mean, humans are fascinated by like failed th- or things that are dying or decaying or things like that. Yeah. Your topic is Chipotle. <sighs> yeah. My jam. My- <laughs> What, yeah, last What's night. Order? What's your order? Uh, carnitas bowl, or bowl with a tortilla. If I can get, the, if you can't do it online, you got to get the tortilla on the side. Bowl, uh, brown rice, brown uh, black beans, carnitas, fajitas, um, corn, tomato, uh, sour cream, cheese, and lettuce. Nice. You? Uh, I've been back to the double wrap burrito, white rice, black beans, chicken, and then I do like, uh, hot hot red sauce on the side. Cheese and sour cream. What's your dad's favorite DJ's uh, Chipotle order? I'm a brown rice. Been carnitas lately. It used to be steak and chicken. And then it's mild and corn, extra sour cream, guac, cheese, tortilla on the side. Nice. All right. So if you want to get us food, <laughs> uh, you guys heard our orders. Uh, if you want to be, uh, you know, we'll let you know. If you buy us Chipotle, <laughs> we'll buy you Chipotle. One. <laughs> <laughs> Just one. My tummy is yeah. now like, hey, buddy. Yeah. How's it going? That's last night I had a, or yesterday at a disc golf tournament. I came back. I crushed two bowls. What? <laughs> I have never. What? Yeah. I, within like two hours of each other. Within back to back hour, bowls. Yeah. That's insane. That's what a I lot. Do. What do you have? A black hole for a stomach? <laughs> we'll never know. <laughs> <laughs> Your topic is music videos. Oh, the. I still can't pronounce her name right. Help me out. The is it Britney Dua Spears. Lipa? Oh, Dua Lipa. Dua Lipa. The answer you're looking for is Dua Lipa. <laughs> Dua Lipa. I didn't, I couldn't tell. Dua Lipa. Her, she's hers are my favorite right now. I haven't seen them. I, I guess they might be my favorite too. The, yeah. Well, when you see them, they will be. <laughs> uh, but I also like the classic old school ones. Um, I'll, yeah, all I remember is TRL, Total Request Live. Don't request live. Bullet with butterfly wings or whatever. What is the uh, band? What is porn? the band of the two brothers? And it's their last name from Columbus. They're like Morrison or Ma- Ma- um, oh. oh, I can't remember. Just like the two young brothers. They were young when they started. Hanson. Long. Hanson. Oh, the Hanson. I thought there's three of them. Oh, there were. Yeah. yeah. Um. Mbop. Mbop. That. <laughs> I'm just. I'm, we're on the same Thank wavelength you. right you. now. Uh, the other thing was. I was just trying to be an ass. Weezer. <laughs> Weezer recreated, they did a cover of Take On Me. Nice. No. Screw Not you nice. guys. The ori- I do like Weezer. Oh, they did like a ska they, version, right? They did something, and it was the music video was just a replicated one with Finn Wolfhard from Stranger Things. And I'm just, why do we have to do this? Yeah. The original one. Stay away from it. Don't. Touch well, it. I think no real big fish did a ska cover of uh, Take On Me. That probably was great. It was good. I like that one. <laughs> real big fish. <laughs> Uh, music videos. I like music videos. Actually, it's my preferred way of listening to music. If I'm being hmm. really honest with you, I just think it's the visual creativity. I don't listen to a lot of just daily music. I don't turn on playlists and just jam through it. I, if I'm listening to music, I'm pulling up my favorite hits and watching music videos that I like. You get the whole experience. Yeah, the whole experience. Oh. <laughs> no, I want to keep going. Too bad. Well, that's too, <laughs> too bad, bad man. <laughs> I'm tired, Grandpa. <laughs> uh, that was that was good. Nice job, my dad's favorite DJ. Yeah, or your dad's favorite DJ. My bad. No, I guess not my dad. My dad's favorite DJ now. Or is he? No, he's, no, your, he's dad's. your dad's favorite DJ. He's your dad. Right there. All the dads out there. This guy. That's. I mean, there there was really nothing broken in that segment. Yeah. But if there was something broken, it it kind of almost broke my brain to to a point. Uh, and in speaking of broken things, if you have a doodad, a what's it, any type of thingamabob, or even a box full of trinkets that have just been waiting for a repair, take them down to your local Big Guys Repair. With over 500 locations across these United States and Guam, Big Guys Repair brings a small town repair shop feel to whichever place you are in, except Florida, because there's no fix in that place. Big Guys Repair can fix anything. They employ only the best and brightest at Big Guys Repair, and they will return your item working or your money back. At the checkout counter, whisper code VC Big Pod into your 
friendly associates here for 30% off your repair price. There's no job too big for big guys repair. This is not an actual product, service, or idea. Just in case you thought it was, it's not. If there is something out there with the same name, we are unaware and have no affiliation offer, no judgment on the actual product, service, or idea. <laughs> here we go. As I'm blowing into the microphone, we're coming. So your dad's favorite DJ out there, uh, whoever's listening, your dad's favorite DJ has been asking us some some real hard questions that he's got. Um, and we figured let's turn this into a segment. So um, Nick and I will, uh, you know, try to help your dad's favorite DJ figure out what he's got going on. So your dad's favorite DJ, what's on your mind today? Yeah, I've been pondering with this one for a while, guys. It's kind of been crawling around my brainstem a lot. And I want to know what you guys think. You know, would you rather have... 500 tarantulas crawling around your house or would you rather a thousand crickets hopping around your bedroom i'm gonna go hard in on the tarantulas that's that's me yeah i'm, I'm a crickets guy all right well <laughs> that's stupid <laughs> no <laughs> yeah all right you think you're a master debater i'm a, i am a master debater every day <laughs> all the time no look tarantulas even if you have arachnophobia, right? They are the nicest looking spiders out there. I'm just going to open with that. The general appeal. Yes, they're big. They're big and they're scary and they're the biggest ones, but they're furry. They're fluffy. They, you could probably eventually trick your brain into getting on board with the tarantula. So opening argument is that they, in general, don't look as gross as crickets. In general, they do look pretty pretty scary, but I would like to say crickets. Crickets are cute. They're adorable. They are the music what? makers of nature. They are the violinists, the strings. If if you were if you were to tell me I could have one thousand uh, string violinists and cellists in my bedroom every day, every night, I am gonna take that five thousand times out of four thousand times because. Why would I not want the sweet, sweet sounds of nature to to lullaby me to sleep? Well, I mean, look, I mean, this guy can't even do math. I mean, you're gonna believe a guy who can't even do math? Like five thousand out of four thousand? Come on! No, you can't attack the person. And, no, yeah, <laughs> this is this is, a, this is a debate. This is a debate. Um, absolutely. I mean, your point is valid, mostly because of the math comment, but also crickets. If you get a thousand of them, like those are decibels upon decibels upon decibels. You are not going to ever sleep again. That's just it. With a nice bunch of tarantulas, they're quiet, they're docile, they don't make any noise. They're pets. They are pets. They can be pets. The one trick will be, you know, just keeping them contained. You maybe make a little fence around your bed and they leave you alone for the most part. So what I'm hearing is that you are terribly terrified of these tarantulas that are in your house one of those gets out you you're you're not going to count 500 tarantulas every day just to make sure they are all in this contained cage that is that is fear that i'm hearing of these tarantulas whereas crickets i don't care if a, if a cricket jumps in my mouth that's more protein and vitamins for me that that is that is bar none uh, a great outcome on my end and the other thing don't get me started on the money i'm going to be making on these crickets Crickets, you can get crickets. You can sell them twelve dollars for two hundred fifty crickets. So right there, that's forty eight bucks. But if I keep the thousand crickets, they they multiply at an incredible rate. These crick female crickets, on average, lay five to ten eggs a day. So just think about that. I am think thinking about, about how many crickets you're eventually gonna have and in your house. and how much money I'm going to okay, be making all right. on these. Okay, if you're willing, really, you're gonna have to invest in a huge, incredible pair of noise canceling headphones that's all i'm saying hey we're with the tarantulas with the tarantulas they take care of themselves here the other thing about tarantulas is not fear it's just a matter of comfort you don't let you don't let all your dogs sleep in your bed do you you don't let all your cats you know come sit on your face when you're sleeping it's the same thing with tarantulas if they're a pet you're just going to make sure that your boundaries are set with them the thing is about tarantulas they live 25 years right so they're not procreating at a mass amount with crickets. Pretty soon you're going to have you're going to be stepping on crickets walking to take a piss in the bathroom. Tarantulas, 25 years, you're going to have that company for that whole time, but you're not going to have to worry about 
thousands and thousands and thousands of them walking around your house. So, I mean, but that's an incredible fact. 25 years is a long time. That's a long, that's longer than a dog. That's longer than a cat. It is. I take, take it you've never seen a spider sack before. And all these <laughs> creepy little little tarantulas being born. Uh, after all these 500 tarantulas are, uh, you know, cohabitating, there's going to be a lot more tarantulas, a lot more creepy crawlies around. And don't get me started on the venom of these tarantulas. Like they, yeah, it's not deadly in one dose, but to to feel the effects of uh, the likeness of a bee sting is what I was I see. Yeah, and I knew you were gonna come at me with that. I knew, and I was prepared. I am prepared. So I'd like to explain to your dad's favorite DJ. It's it's as minor as a bee sting, and allergic reactions are very low. They seem to be more docile, especially if they're handled more frequently. Oftentimes, being used in kindergarten classrooms as one of the class pets. So. If I could take what is essentially a gerbil with eight legs and not worry about it with kindergarten students, I'm going to be fine in my own house with 500 little friends running around. So I see your, I see your argument, but not as threatening as some might say. I'm not looking for the, that lawsuit of, uh, oh, no, my kid got bit by a, by a tarantula, and now I got to take him. Just because, you know, some people some people are unlearned. They might not know that it's... Uh, incredibly not toxic to a degree but you know you got 500 of them around you're not trying to keep them all in check because if you get bit by 500 i'm sure that could cause some uh serious do you serious... know do you know how like i understand but like you're, you're kind of like messing with people's heartstrings here i mean like i heard a guy the other day tell me i had to put fluffy down i was like oh man really sorry to hear about that i have a dog i lost no 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 i had to put my pet tarantula down it bit a kid my buddy's kid came over and and i had to put that tarantula down that's sad. That's sad. So just because yeah, just, I get what you're saying, but like people, I'm an exterminator. So give me a call. Uh, I'll take care of that tarantula right away. Uh, how did you do it? With a boot. So just just Cheapest, just to point out my opinion, guy. my my opponent's stance here. He's willing to essentially can use use these crickets as food source to have more crickets, which yep. he will then send off into insect slavery which could be used for anything from baiting fish hooks yep. to feeding you know, rats and, and other pets. And then he's also an exterminator that exterminates my pets, my tarantula pets. Take care of both our problems. You're essentially condoning insecticide. Yeah. And what I can actually do here is if you do have 500 tarantulas and you are looking for food for those 500 tarantulas, I will cut you a deal. $10 per 250 uh, crickets, and I will deliver them myself if that's what you want in, in your house. That sounds like a good deal. I have a lot of tarantulas. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, what does your dad's favorite DJ think about this? I don't know. I think you both put up really good arguments. You know, it's, you know, it's really been tearing me apart here. Uh, as far as the crickets, you know, Nick makes a good point about how nice they are. They're really nice, sweet animals, and I didn't know that. Thanks for bringing tarantulas. It. That's my point. Yeah, yeah. Tarantulas. Tarantulas. tarantulas, eight legs, yeah. not six. Come oh on. yeah. <laughs> so, but uh, you know, with the with the crickets, I see way more of a lucrative lucrative uh, scenario here. So, and, and something way more manageable, I think. So, I, I might have to go with the crickets. Oh. I don't. Crickets don't well, bite. Well, when crickets you have a cricket bite. problem on your hands, you could call yeah. me and my tarantulas, and I will come I'd over and help you out. That sounds like a good. When they get out of hand and and you got millions of crickets in your house, <laughs> I, I got too many. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is uh, yeah. So that was uh, our inaugural master debaters. I think I'm gonna I, get you next time. Yeah, I think Nick put up some really good points there. He he was convincing me. It's like maybe tarantulas aren't so bad. I played a little <laughs> dirty though. I feel bad about it, but you know, hey. it's just my job. I'm just a lobbyist for tarantulas, the Tarantula Association of America. Yeah. Um. What do the you TAA the TAA what it, but what do you guys think uh, what would you rather have 500 tarantulas in your house or 1000 crickets in your bedroom let us know in the comments on YouTube Instagram or email us at velocity chaos podcast I was going to say you were making me sweat hard I am an arachnophobe <laughs> <laughs> and when you're like describing things I'm just like I can't do this <laughs> I like sweating out of my armpits <laughs> thinking about holding one of these things but it did actually help me I had to it's look good. up a lot of pictures of, of <laughs> you did of I think you did really good of uh, tarantulas. Don't be a hero, mate. You look after.
after your mates and your mates will always look after you. Yeah, cheers. Oh, it is time for our favorite segment of the show, Australian News, where we go down under and check in with our friends down in the island nation. I keep calling it island nation, but it is it's kind of an, it's the it's the island big continent. island nation. Island continent nation of Australia. We pick a headline that we like. Some of them are uplifting, some of them are scary as hell. Uh <laughs> this one is a lot of fun. Um this is the most buttholy place in Australia. <laughs> the Cistern Chapel. <laughs> okay. This this is a place many people go to You'd absquatulate uh, from that place. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going opposite. I'm going to this place. Yeah, absquatulate from it. <laughs> no, you absquatulate from your body. Things absquatulate from you oh, at this geez. place. The Cistern Chapel. <laughs> this is a place where people find serenity, where people find comfort from discomfort, and where people can just offload a lot of their troubles. <laughs> Uh, the city of Maryborough, which is three and a half hours drive north of Brisbane, has unveiled this latest tourist attraction. It is the most beautiful loo in Australia. Wow. Essentially, uh, this place is this precinct, as they call it, which is essentially like a county, I think, in the equivalent, um, formed the Cistern Chapel Committee, which is uh, headed up by Nancy Bates. And she had a vision to just make the most beautiful toilet uh, that you could ever take a crap in. That is marvelous. Uh, this woman is a saint. She is the oh. saint of 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 uh, bowels, <laughs> the patron saint of bowels. Excrements. <laughs> of excrements. Uh, I'm looking at the picture of this toilet. It looks like the most comfortable place to ever put your keister. Uh, the walls are adorned with beautiful hand-painted images of flowers in different varying colors. There are, you know, ornate um, fixtures on the walls, and uh, the windows are are painted with like a watercolor stained glass, almost emulating some of the uh, some some major cathedrals would be envious of this toilet. Uh, so, I know why I'm going to Australia. <laughs> <laughs> This reminds me of the Rick and Morty episode where yeah. he just has the most perfect uh, place to take a crap. I have home bowl syndrome, so mm. this means a lot to me that somebody would make it like as comfortable as possible. Um, home bowl. <laughs> home bowl. That is, that is a one magnificent pooper. <laughs> yeah, that, right, that, that right. John. That's I would, a Jonathan. I would not... <laughs> take a crap for like five days and i'd just be like this i would go for a transcendental like a transcendental experience like, wheel me there <laughs> boom yeah it's my last one <laughs> <laughs> this thing is glory like is that gold i'm sure it's it looks nah, gold it's like bronzish goldish bronze is gold. okay so i've seen an actual gold toilet with yeah like a chic somewhere in the middle east but this is ornate. It's yeah. designed. It's beautiful. It is. It wow. I will give a lot of credit to the artist. His name is uh, Gary Madden. He also ha was conscious in his mind of like this being a public facility at the county house or uh, the, at the McDonald's the hall, <laughs> <laughs> the fanciest loo at a McDonald's. He he was also saying like, mothers will come in here and nurse. So I wanted them to have this beautiful, tranquil place to have a moment with their children. So. A lot of people, a lot of caring people. The more I read these, the more segments we do, Australian news, the more I realize Australia is just a great place. It is. It, it does sound fantastic. <laughs> Except for their very poisonous spiders, <laughs> which I would not want to have 500 of them in my house. No. The ones the size of your head. Yeah. Uh, well, the huntsmen weren't venomous either. <laughs> oh, yeah. But they're just creepy as hell. I'm, yeah. But I'm sure there's other, plenty, several other ones that are. The bird killer. Yeah. I think there's a yeah. bird killer spider. That's that's South America. I know oh, there's one okay. down there. Okay. And yeah. they're aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> uh, coming stories, at you. There's stories of them like running at people. That's the scariest yeah. that's the scariest scenario I can think of. Yeah. Standing twenty feet away from a spider and it going yeah. and you're just like beelining. What do you do? Look at you absquatulate if you can. <laughs> you you absquatulate the hell out of there. <laughs> or you just hope you can step before it jumps. <laughs> you just really good at like hey, <laughs> just like, just like turn it into like uh, a Cotton Eye Joe segment yeah. here. Oh, I mean that just shows you like in life when you want to have a seat and 
and you're on the front of the ride and, and it's the most glorious chair that you could ever sit on and you just got things to absquatulate, but you got to hold it. You got to hold it. You got to, you got to be rise above it. Hold on to it because when you're on that skateboard, you don't know, you don't know what shin, your shin's going to get hurt. Okay. Okay. Get, you, you better know that, you know, there are going to be hills in life that you got to go down, but you, you know what, you know what hills, hills, you can go up hills too. You can climb to the top and you can look at everything behind you once you've gotten there. And, and if you're not doing, making the most money that you can based on what you can do, you, you're squandering it. You have to be out there learning everything you can about tarantulas, even if you fear them, even if, even if you hate those little, little, little devils and you slap the devil out of them, you slap the fear out of yourself and you, you sit down next to your bush and you read up on tarantulas it's just because it could help you. It could help you. It could help you help someone else. And it, it, cause you could have your crickets and you can give them to your buddy who's fishing and you can charge him a dollar or something. And there you go. You just made a dollar. Nice job. Woo woo. All right, we are going to pull into the recommendation station. And I wanted to give you guys something, uh, something that I found last week. Actually, I found it before, but uh, I re-experienced it last week. And it was the Easy Go Food Mart in Painesville, Ohio. I know this, this is a very specific one, but um, it's, it's 30 miles like northeast of Cleveland. And I need a place to stop for lunch. And the place I was at, it was the only like, like good, quick grab and go place like around there. There was there was a barbecue place, like maybe if I had the foresight, I'd order something. But it's like I need something like quick, 10 minutes in and out. Um, so it's like a convenience store gas station. And you're thinking, that's gross. Uh, you're, why are you eating gas station food? But man, this place is a diamond in the rough. It's a gem. It really is. Um, they have some bomb fried chicken, chicken tenders, JoJo's, you know, potato wedges. If, yeah. if you're not from around here, but, you know, the slaw and stuff, uh, all that, all that good fixings. And, and it's all for really affordable prices is the other thing. Cause I'm a cheap bastard. I am. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not saying go to easy, easy go food mart in Painesville and unless you're in the area. But what I want you to do is I want you, I recommend that you go out in your area. You find those. You find those, you know, what places that you think might be crappy and go check, just check them out. Check them out. You're like that, that shack that, why are there like 50 cars around this shack? It looks like a dump. Go in there. Just, just pop your head in at least. Maybe, maybe it's delicious or maybe they're, I don't know. Maybe they got some operation, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, find, find an awesome spot for food that you, you know, you really didn't think. Like, and there's a lot of gas stations. I know there's a couple around here, like one on the west side that's like... I was going to say, as, I, as a man who frequents gas station yeah. breakfast, I can appreciate this recommendation yeah. station. Yeah, go go find it. Your dad's favorite DJ recommends it as well. Find that gas station grocery store that's selling... that They have, They just have that old lady that's frying up chicken in the back. That Those places are the bomb. <laughs> Can't beat the chicken. <laughs> I think that's copyrighted. Uh, censor that out. No, that's a good one. Uh, I, I just looked up their menu. Like, I, like <laughs> their website is exactly what I pictured it. Super stripped back and just yeah. straightforward. But they got like chicken egg rolls, which, okay, let's do it. So yeah. I'm down. Hot I'm down. sticks. Going to have to drive out there out of my way, spend the same amount of gas that I would just going to yeah. a local place. But it's okay. It's recommended. Go do it. That concludes that. That concludes the final segment. Wow. What am I trying to say here? It's all right. You're tearing up. I'm tearing up because Easy Go just touched you and that touched me. Yeah. Fried food, man. Bringing people together since the dawn of time. Uh, no, that concludes episode 56 of the Velocity Chaos Podcast. That's what I was trying to say. Thank you for being here. Thank you to your dad's favorite DJ for being here, running the board, making Buzzkill amazing. And thank you to you, our listeners, who I already thanked. Couldn't do it without you. We do it for you guys and for each other. I do it for this guy over here. This is Nick signing off. See you next time. And this is Luke signing off again. Yes, Nick said thank you. I also want to say thank you because I don't want to be left out of saying thank you. 
And I'm sure your dad's favorite DJ would say thank you. Thank you. If he wanted to. And I guess he did. But uh, I truly appreciate you guys. More to come. Hope you like the new segments in the last few episodes, couple episodes. Let us know. Send us an email. Leave us a comment. But like we always say, when that tarantula's running at you, you better absquatulate the hell out of there. Have a good one. Thank you for tuning in to the Velocity Chaos Podcast. We upload new episodes every Monday and Thursday. Be sure to subscribe and rate us on iTunes, Spotify, or your podcast platform of choice. Interact with us on Instagram at Velocity Chaos Pod or on Facebook and YouTube at Velocity Chaos Podcast. We are grateful for your time and hope you enjoyed it here. Please tell a friend and thank you once again.